Premier Perrottet is targeting Kiama and the South Coast, two Liberal strongholds that could be lost on Saturday. He's on a two-day tour of the southeast of the state with travelling media. Kenny Heatley is there. Kenny, uh, where are you now? There's been quite a few stops today. We've been enjoying your coverage, including a quick interview with the Premier. Yes, that's right. We're still in Narrow. We've just stopped at a, at a school, outside a school, where we're just charging some phones because there's no charges here. And just getting back to ACD Thunderstruck, uh, we're on the Premier's bus. We've already heard it once. Uh, play over the speakers here. How many more times we're going to have to hear it? Not sure, but it seems to be the theme song of the 2023 election campaign so far. Um, but what's just happened in the last couple of minutes, or, or really... In the last hour, we had the release of costings by the Parliamentary Budget Office. Um, so they released the costings on how much everything that's been promised by the Coalition and Labor, um, you know, how much borrowing is going to take place. Well, there's been, there's been a lot of confusion um, because initially the Parliamentary Budget Office came out and said that the borrowings to over the four years to 2025, 2026 is going to increase under Labor and decrease over the coalition. Well, I've been getting frantic calls from the Labor side saying that the parliamentary office got that wrong in reverse and they're going to re-release it and that Labor's debt position is going to be about $4.9 billion better than the coalition. And a lot of that comes from savings, particularly from capital expenditure. But interestingly, I couldn't find anything on raising the Warragamba Dam wall uh, in, in that costings, but also there's nothing on releasing the wage cap which is, accounts for 40% of the budget. So by Labor saying they're going to be in a better budget position, well, we got the wages cap to deal with. So that's something that is very interesting. But just getting back to the hustings. So we've been in, in Nowra. We've been covering Kiama and also the South Coast electorate. And the Premier was on a street walk probably about an hour and a half ago. Here's how that went. I'm teaching the kids numbers. Yeah. Telling the time. Very important. And the numbers. And stickers. Very important, James, the numbers. <laughs> What's it like to have the Premier come in and, and check out the shop and buy something? Oh, a little bit starstruck, really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was a very packed shop. So <laughs> Shelley Hancock has been quite a stalwart down here yes. as the as the Liberal MP, yes, um, not yes. recontesting. What, what do you think is going to happen now that she's not running? Yes, I'm a bit concerned about that, actually. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what's going to happen, but I, I do like the um, Conservative Party and I'm going to be voting the Conservative Party. And just more on Shelley Hancock. She's held the seat of the South Coast for two decades, but is retiring and obviously is well known. Now, Luke Sikori is stepping in in her place, but if you overlap the federal seat of Gilmore um, and what happened in the federal election, well, it could flip. Um, to Labor, so even though we've got a, a Liberal ma majority here of, of 10, but the margin is over 10%, um, there's real concern. And the, the Premier, by being here and doing these tours of these South Coast areas, is really showing that he's on defence um, in these Liberal-held seats. But here's more on Shelley Hancock. I was chatting with the Premier on that street walk. Shelley Hancock on the South Coast, bit, bit of a disappointment that she's not running again? Oh, well, Shelley's been a, a great stalwart, you know, for, for the community in South Coast. She's well-loved, but I know she's mentored Luke Sakura really well, and I know he'll, be, he'll make a great member just like Shelley. I'm not worried, you know why? Because Luke Sakura knows this seat, I think, better than I do. He's brilliant. He's just across every issue, every village and town, and I'm not just saying that, it's true. So I'm sure that this will be in safe hands with Luke Sakura. And you know who else we've seen on this trip? Melanie Gibbons. So Melanie Gibbons lost her pre-selection to her seat of Holsworthy. Um, then she was at the last minute parachuted in to contest Kiama against former Coalition Minister, now independent Gareth Ward, in the seat of Kiama. Now, it's not very long to campaign for Melanie Gibbon Gibbons there. Um, it's on a Liberal margin of 12% at the moment, but will it split the Conservative vote there now that you've got Melanie Gibbons and Gareth Ward there? And at the press conference that we had just this afternoon, the Premier has asked, well, is Melanie Gibbons going to be promised a senior Cabinet position? Here's a bit more uh, from that. What I'm saying is that Mel Gibbons will make a great member for Kiama. And I say to the people of Kiama, vote one Liberal, vote one Melanie Gibbons. She has been a strong advocate in the New South Wales Parliament.
Uh, she's a very strong candidate. So, Kieran, we've been calling this the premier bus of mystery because each location, they're not telling us where we're going. Um, they just tell us rough times. We don't know our next stop. It's going to be leaving here shortly. And so it's left up to speculation. We think it might be Bega, which is currently held by Labor. So maybe going on the offence there on the Liberal bus. We don't know where we're going to be staying tonight, but we're along for the ride. You are indeed. Kenny, thanks so much for the update. Appreciate that. And mate, I will uh, see you on Wednesday night, though, Kenny Heatley, for the final showdown of the New South Wales election campaign. Dominic Perrottet, Chris Minns, in front of undecided voters this Wednesday at the Sky News Daily Telegraph People's Forum. I will be moderating that one, 7.30pm this Wednesday. Make sure you join us there. Kenny Heatley will be among the audience as we watch the final debate of the campaign.